This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, yet another lecture on uh, advanced variances. We've done mix and yield, planning and operational, sales mix. Uh, the next one is something called advanced idle time. Uh, where, uh, to be honest, it, it is much, much less likely that you would be asked these variances, but I still think it's important we go through it because, excuse me, uh, the um, logic involved could be asked anywhere and has been asked. Uh, I'll explain what it means as we go through. Um, but have a look at example five. A company budgets that each unit will take 7.6 hours to make. It budgets on paying the workers at the rate of 5.70 per hour. But it budgets that 5% of the hours paid for will be idle. Now it's that that makes the difference. In paper F2 we had idle time variances. But in paper F2 there was no mention of budgeting for it. Uh, so that any idle time was automatically a variance. But here, we perhaps being more realistic, we know that workers can't work every minute of every hour. And so we're saying, OK, let's budget on the fact that 5% of the time they will be idle. And so that's what we expect. Uh, we've only got a problem if they're idle more than 5% of the, of the time. Uh, the actual results of production of a thousand units. Uh, hours paid, we actually pay 8,200 hours at a cost of 50,020, and the hours worked 7,740. So, look at what's required. And the first few bits, nothing to do with the variance, comes that later. It says, what will appear on the standard cost card? as the labour cost per unit. Well, uh, we know how many hours um, they budgeted to, to work, so 7.6 hours. Ah, but we've got a problem. Because although they're going to work 7.6 hours, and although we're going to pay them at 5.70 per hour, we know that 5% of the hours they paid for they aren't actually going to be doing any work. Think about this. Surely for every hundred hours we pay, if you pay a hundred hours, five percent of the hours we pay for will be idle. So uh, you're expecting five hours idle, standard idle time. And therefore, how many hours do you actually expect to work? You don't expect to work 95 hours. So for every 95 hours of work, we're actually going to have to pay them for more. And we want 7.6 hours of work, but we're actually going to have to pay them for more hours. So although they'll work 7.6 hours, how many hours will we have to pay them for? Well, they, and we have to pay them 100 hours for every 95 they work. And so you have to pay them for 100 over 95 times 7.6. We'll actually be paying them for eight hours. Now think about that for a minute. You see, we'll pay them for eight hours. They'll be idle 5% of the time. 5% of eight is 0.4 hours. We'll be left with 7.6 hours where they're actually working. So every, um, every unit we make, they will work 7.6 hours, but how much will we have to pay? We'll have to pay for eight hours. And how much do we pay them per hour? $5.70. So, in fact, the labour cost per unit is 45.60 per unit. 
And that's the figure uh, per unit for labour. Now, you know, we're not going to be doing a full cost card, but normally you, know, you have your materials, labour, your overheads. Uh, for labour, we'll be bringing in 45 60 per unit. He says, what's the effective standard cost for each hour worked? Well, although we're paying them 45 60 that was for 7.6 hours of work. And so the cost per hour worked Each unit's costing 45.60. Each unit takes 7.6 hours of work. And so how much per hour worked? Sorry, my calculator is not doing the daftest things. That last. Um, $6 per hour. So we're paying them at the rate of 570. But as a result, every hour of work we'd expect to be costing us six dollars. And so on the cost card, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, the total is 4560, but you know, on the cost card, you'd normally say, oh, labor. 7.6 hours per unit. How much is each hour costing? Well, the working hours are costing $6. Again, 45.60. Now, I don't know if that's making sense because, as I say, even if um, you never asked variances uh, on this on a, a outside time, certainly what's there could be asked um, as bits of costing. But let's carry on. Since here we know um, the standards take 7.6 hours, pay 5.70 hour, 5% idle, whatever. Um, let's have a go at doing the variances. First of all, it says calculate the total. So forget any analysis, forget what's causing it. What's the total labour variance going to be? Well, the total labour variance we simply uh, look at the total actual cost. How much did we pay? The hours paid 8,000 at a cost of 50,020. Now compare it with the standard cost for the actual production. How many did we produce? 1,000 units. How much should each unit cost for labour? 45.60. Uh, which is what? 45.600. So, if we're getting the reasons for things going wrong, in total we should have paid 45.60. We actually paid 50,020. So, we have an adverse variance of 4420. However, as always, we want to analyse why are we overspending. And this time, there are three reasons. One reason, of course, is the rate we're paying them. We should be paying them 5.70 an hour. Whatever else I've done, if you pay them differently at 5.70 an hour, I think clearly we've been variance. Rate of pay variance. As always, there's an efficiency. We've got to look at efficiency variance. They should be taking 7.6 hours a unit. If they take more or less than 7.6 hours, efficiency. But with one extra one here, we have budgeted that 5% of the hours would be idle. Well, if more than 5% or less than 5% are idle, then again, with a variance. Let's go through and analyse. First of all, the rate of pay variance. I'll do it in exactly the normal way. 
we take the actual hours paid and let's see if we pay the right uh, rate. We take it at actual cost compared with what we should have paid. Actual hours paid at standard cost. Well, how many hours did we actually pay? 8,200. And how much did it actually cost? 50,020. How much should it have cost? Well, we're looking at the rate of pay. And so when I say standard cost, it's the standard pay rate. Those hours we've paid for, we should be paying at 570 per hour. And so had we paid them the right rate, what would it have been? 8,200 times 570. I think 46,740. And therefore, obviously, paying at a higher rate, the variance is 3,280. Adverse. So that one really no different from normal. Uh, normal rules, just be careful when you're picking the right figures. Uh, normally, the only other one we worry about is efficiency, so let's go straight to efficiency. Uh, and for efficiency, we're looking to see did they work longer or shorter than we would expect. So, exactly the normal way. We'll compare the actual hours worked How many hours did they work? 7740? Compare it with the hours they should have worked the standard hours for the actual production Uh, how many we produced a thousand units? How many hours should each unit take? How many hours of work? 7.6 from the first line. So they should have worked 7,600 hours. They've taken too long. 140 hours. Obviously, we need to cost it. How are we going to cost it? Think back. Although we're paying them five seven, or should be paying them five seventy an hour, we worked out earlier that every working hour, the standard cost should be six dollars, and so we'll cost it at the standard cost per work hour. Every hour of work is six dollars. If everything else is going perfectly, so if you take 140 hours too long, it's costing us 840. It's adverse. They took longer than they should. So so far, same as always, except that business of uh, making sure we're costing it at the right rate. But finally, we need to look at idle time. But remember, for idle time, we've budgeted on idle. We expect them to be idle 5% of the time. And we're only worried if the actual idle time is more or less than the 5%. So let's have a look. Let's look in hours. What was the actual idle time? Well, the actual idle time is the difference between the actual hours paid of 8,200 and the actual hours they worked, 7,740. So the actual idle time, the difference, is 460 hours. Well, again, I am only worried if that's more or less than the standard idle time. So how many hours should they have been idle? Well, 
Well, look at the uh, information. Um, uh, we budgeted that 5% of the hours paid for will be idle. Well, we paid for 8,200. And therefore, how many hours should they have been idle? I think it's 410, but I don't want to make a fool of myself. 410. So you have a problem. If they were idle, um, if they were idle exactly 410, no variance, no problem. But here, they were 50 hours too many idle, if you excuse me. I need to cost it. How am I going to cost it? Well, idle time, we're losing hours that we should have worked. By being idle 50 hours too much, that's 50 hours of work that we're not doing. And so we cost out at the standard work rate. Which we'd calculated with $6. 50 hours at $6. 300. And again, were they too much idle or too little? They were too much idle. It's adverse. Uh, but appreciate, looking at it this way, it can be favourable. If the actual idle had only been 400, it would have been less than we uh, expected uh, a favourable variance. Uh, so there we are. Let's just check it works because we have worked out the total initially. And what have we got? We've got the rate of pay variance of 3,280. I can't remember this up there, rule adverse, adverse. We've got an efficiency variance of 840 adverse. Uh, and finally, an idle time variance. Or actually, excess idle time. Ooh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but the idle time variance, what was it? Ooh, 300. So here they're all adverse. Don't seem to be doing too well. But the total variance, 3280, 840, 300. Four four twenty. Is that what I had at the beginning? Total variance. Four four twenty. Yes. Uh, so it does work. You know, as always, these variances are the analysis. Uh, but we've done it. Okay. So I know I repeat myself a lot, uh, but I did say at the beginning the variances themselves are unlikely, but could be asked. Uh, A and B certainly have been asked and um, could be part of anything or could be part of a, uh, could be a multiple choice question. So that's that one.